If you're looking for a new golf watch, there are a bunch of different options to pick from. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Garmin VivoActive 3 to the Garmin Approach S20, as well as the Garmin Approach S40, and talking about which ones can be best for golfers. So what we're going to be talking about in this video are what these watches actually do, the golf features they come with, how the quality was, and also be talking about the cheapest place to pick them up. See the full review down below if you'd like to see a full demo of any of these. I will just mention our gear giveaway. If you want to enter in, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment giveaway down below. Do those three things and be automatically entered. So let's start with the Garmin Vivo Active 3. So the Vivo Active 3 has been one of my favorite multi-sport watches on the market. And since the newer Vivo Active 4 has come out, the price of the 3 has dropped down a lot. I still think it's an awesome device and it's one of the best bang for your buck units out there. So it's going to come with all the essential golf features you'll be looking for. And it's also going to track, it's going to give you tracking for other sports as well. So you can use it at the gym, you know, when you're out trail running, rock climbing, or pretty much whatever else you're up to. So you're also going to be able to keep track of your heart rate and see how well you're sleeping. Um, this feature isn't the best, I'm going to be completely honest, but it does do an okay job. So this watch is the cheapest on this list, which is going to be a big deal for a lot of people, but it's going to show you pretty much how far you hit each shot, how far you are from hazards, and how far you are from the green. And yes, it's going to keep the score as well. So this is a multi-square watch, and it's not designed specifically for golf, but it does have a golf app. It's going to give you all the kind of basic features. It's not as, 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 as advanced as some of the other ones, but it's going to give you like, you know, what hole you are on, what the par is, um, distance to the front, middle, and back of the green, distance to hazards, like how far you are from the front of the hazard to the back of the hazard, what type of hazard it is, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to give you pretty much like 95% of what you want to know. So let's just cover some pros and cons. So pros, it's an awesome watch if you do multiple sports. The price of it can't be beaten. It has most of the golf features you'd need, and it's one of the more comfortable watches I've used. Cons, it doesn't have quite as many golf features as the other two. It's quite a bit harder to use compared to the other two just because it has more features and whatnot. And then the sleep monitoring feature isn't that great, but it's okay. And most watches aren't that really that great anyway. So let's jump over to the Garmin Approach S20. So this here is the best entry level golf specific watch on the market and it was always the go to before the price of the Vivo dropped. So it has all of the essential golf features and the price is going to break the bank either. So the main downside with this watch is that it doesn't have quite as many additional features as the Vivo. So it's, it's a golf specific watch. So it pretty much only does like you know, the golf stuff, like the basic golf stuff, and then some fitness tracking as well. So if you are someone who does multiple sports and you want like a bunch of different tracking for different things, it might not be the best option for you. But pretty much the S20 has all the same golf features as the Vivo, but, but the S20 does have a few additional golf features. So the first is going to be that it comes loaded with over 40,000 courses from around the world. The Vivo has access to all those courses, but you have to download them one at a time. So it's, it's easy to do, but it's just a little bit inconvenient. Once you download them on the Vivo, they'll be saved to your phone. But with the S20 and the golf watches, they're all going to be on there automatically. The second difference is that the S20 is compatible with Garmin TrueSwing and the CT10. So those are trackers you can buy. They're not there. You have to buy them additionally, uh, but they're going to track additional swing inf information like ball speed, club speed, that kind of thing. For whatever reason, the Vivo 3 isn't compatible. But the third difference is that the S20 is more compact than the other two. Because, you know, some people don't like watches like myself included, and the smaller option might be better. So the pros of the S20, so it does come loaded with the courses already and it does have automatic updates. It's the most compact watch on this list. It's just as accurate as the other two watches and then it has some fitness tracking features. Cons, it's not as comfortable as the other two watches in my opinion. It's not as durable as the Vivo and then it doesn't have as many additional features as the Vivo but it does have a few additional golf features. Now let's talk about the Garmin Approach S40. And the S40 is pretty similar to the S20, but it does have a few more features. 
It's around $150 more expensive, but the additions could be worth it for you. So the first thing the S40 does that the S20 doesn't is that it has quick release straps. So you can quickly take them off and customize them however you want. You can buy additional straps, different colors, different materials, all, all that kind of stuff. And you can, you know, simply quick release them. It takes like a couple seconds and then you're good to go. The second difference is the size. So the S40 is going to be a little bit bigger and have a bit of a wider screen. So this is something that could be better for you if you have bigger fingers. It's gonna be able to tell you the weather as well if you if you really care. I, I don't really care, but, uh, and you can also use a calendar as well, which again, I don't really care about too much, but it's there if you want it. But the main difference between the S40 and the S20 is that the 40 has the ability to give you custom targets on the course. So the S20 can pretty much only tell you the distance to the green and hazards but you can get more specific yardage on the S40, which can definitely come in handy. So the pros, it has a few more features in the S20 and Vivo. Those are golf specific features. The touchscreen is super responsive. It has interchangeable straps, and then it is waterproof as well. Cons it is the highest price point of the three. There's no heart rate monitor on it, and then it doesn't have as many um, non-golf specific features as the Vivo. So let's just cover some frequently asked questions. So how long do the batteries last? So the Vivo Active is gonna last around 12 hours in GPS mode. The S20 and the S4 are gonna last a little longer than that. All of them are gonna last over a week in smartwatch mode. Can you play music through the watches? So you can control the music on your phone with the Vivo Active, but the other two you can't. And then can you view messages and incoming calls? Yes, all three of them have smart notifications on them. You can't like talk to them, like to talk to them through, through the watch, but you can like um, answer or reject calls on them. So taking into account all that, which one would I prefer? But overall, all three watches are solid devices and I would recommend any of them. They all have the essential golf features and they're slightly, they're, they're kind of all slightly different. If I had to pick one, it would be the Vivo Active. It has pretty much like 95% of the golf features. It has more tracking capabilities for non-golf stuff. And then it's cheaper than the other two as well. If you are looking for, like you wanna track your like swing stats, such as like club or ball speed, how high your shots are going, smash factor, and pretty much like more stuff like that, you're probably gonna to wanna to stick to the S20 or S40 just because they are compatible with um, the Garmin CT10 or Garmin True Swing. If you can, I would go for the S40. It's definitely going to be a bit higher quality and offer a bit more than the S20, but e either of them are going to be great options. But if you would like to see more images or like a demo or get any of these for the lowest price available, click the link in the description down below. At the time I'm making this video, that was the cheapest place I could find it. So you can go ahead and check out the current price if you want. And if you do have any questions, just simply leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But if you haven't already watched and commented on our latest video, click the video card to the left and get yourself another entry into our golf giveaway.